Welcome back to the Scottabyte channel and this is Scott. Recently I've had requests for talking about how you would use Docker with VLANs. So, in a previous video entitled QNAP LexD Container VLANs, we learned that LexD containers can use Mac VLAN networks to create network profiles for existing VLANs. LexD containers on VLANs can be created using these profiles. Recall that VLANs are separately addressed networks that run on the same cable. Docker containers default to being created on a Docker private NAT network. So what does Docker do? Well, Docker hosts by default create containers on a private NAT network, normally something like a 10.0.3.x, and it maps container ports on that Docker host to the address of the Docker host. As an example there, 192.168.10.20. So this means that generally all Docker containers that are on one Docker host share the same IP and must use unique port numbers. For example, if I have a docker run command and the application name is test and externally it presents on port 9000 but internally the container uses port 8000, that would be one example. If I have a second application that runs that also wants port 8000, I have to externally present it on port 9001 not to have a conflict or 8001 or whatever port number I should decide upon. So internally, each container runs on a private network such as like the 10.0.3 network that I pointed out earlier. So both of the above containers run on the same host, which would be in this case, in this example, 192.168.10.20. And so the URL of the first application would be that address colon port 9000 and the second application would be that same address port 9001. So how do most folks use VLANs? Well users typically create VLANs on their router and then they set the switch port profile to which that port is connected to that VLAN. So this allows the host connected to that port to get an address on the VLAN without knowing it's actually connected to a VLAN. So this really makes sense for things like IoT devices, PoE cameras, smart TVs, printers, other devices that we really don't have access to the operating system and we can't uh, define VLANs in the host OS. So this works for a host, a host computer also until the number of VLANs that you have outnumbers the number of physical NICs that you have. So there's a better way to do all of this. And that is switch port profiles. So a switch port profile can be set to connect to one or more VLANs on a managed network. And a switch port profile that's set to all can connect to any defined VLAN. So as an example, on a Ubiquiti switch, a Ubiquiti Unify switch here, I have a printer attached and the switch port profile is all and <clears throat> that means that the printer is going to operate on the on tag LAN, but if it was another computer that I could define to go to a particular VLAN, I'd be able to connect to any VLAN on the network because the switch port profile is set to all. So what does Mac VLAN do? <clears throat> well, Mac VLAN is a network driver that connects directly to a host interface and can be used to project a host to any untagged or tagged VLAN network as long as it is defined on the connected switch port profile and defined on the network for that matter. So in my LexD container VLAN video, we learned we could create a LexD profile using Mac VLAN for a desired VLAN and then create a LexD container using the profile to address the container on the VLAN. 
Mac VLAN is particularly nice because every container also receives a unique MAC address on the target network. So Linux hosts can use Mac VLAN via the netplan command to define additional virtual Ethernet NICs for VLANs. So how does this work for Docker? Well, Docker and Mac VLAN work like this. So Docker is a little older than LexD, and so it's not quite as simple or necessarily as straightforward. First, you want to create a Docker network, and you assume that the VLAN exists on the router, of course. So the command is docker network create, and uh, we're, we're telling it to detach Mac VLAN and a subnet and a gateway. And then the parent is going to be a uh, whatever parent device dot whatever VLAN number you want. And then we name the network. In this case, I named the network VLAN 100. In some of my previous videos, we created a test VLAN 100 on the network to do these sorts of things. So I know this looks a little uh, convoluted, but we'll see in an actual example here. So then unlike... LexD, Docker Mac VLAN does not support DHCP. <clears throat> so then you have to create a Docker container using the network and you have to specify the address. So that would be a Docker run. And uh, we're saying Docker run detached. The name of the application is whiteboard. It uses port 8080 internally. And I'm saying, go ahead and present that with port 8080 externally. I know I'm not going to have any conflicts because this container is going to run on its own address. I say, use the network v, uh, VLAN 100 and then use this IP address on VLAN 100. And then the application is one on Docker Hub. We'll use this actual application here in a few minutes. So this has the advantage that each Docker container has its own address on the VLAN, and so there can't be any port conflicts. So let's try this out. A prerequisite to being able to define a Docker host on a VLAN is to have a VLAN. So the first step is that in a previous video, I had created a VLAN called test-VLAN. And I'm on a unified network. And so on a unified network, we set it up as a corporate network. We say VLAN 100 and then 192.168.100.1 is the gateway. And uh, 24 is the subnet mask. And there is the network range. And we have a DHCP range from 192.168.100. Let's start it at 50 and go all the way to 254, meaning that addresses 1 through 49 will be static addresses since we know that we have to create a static address for our uh, Docker Mac VLAN definition. The next step is to look at the switch port to which your host that is going to offer the Docker containers is connected. So in this particular case, it's connected to ports 23 and 24. They happen to be aggregated ports. And so the switch port profile for that host happens to be set to all. But I have some other switch port profiles here. Some are dedicated to particular VLANs and others are combinations of VLANs like this one called DMZ and LabNet. So I'm leaving the switch port profile to all because that will allow me on the host to be able to define our Docker container for VLAN 100. Here we are at an SSH terminal prompt on my Docker host. My first step is I want to say IP route to find out what the names of my interfaces are. And as it turns out, the interface that I want to make the connection on is this one right here because I recognize the IP address of the host. I have several other interfaces on this particular device, but this is the connection that I know is the port that we looked at previously. A Docker PS command will show me which containers I have running on this Docker host, 
and there are two. One of them is the Yacht Container, which is a GUI for LexD that I covered in a previous video, and the other is a your backup server. The other thing that we want to do is we want to do a Docker Network LS. And here you can see that I have a number of different networks that have been defined on this particular device, but none of them are the Mac VLAN network that I want to use for my Docker containers. So I have to create a new network. To create my new network, I'm going to use a Docker network create dash D Mac VLAN dash dash subnet 192.168.100.0 subnet mask of 24 dash dash gateway equals 192.168.100.1 dash zero or dash O excuse me parent equals QVS zero dot 100 which the QBS0 is the parent, dot 100 is VLAN 100, and I want to call this network VLAN 100. So that created it, and I can do a Docker network LS, and my new network is the last one listed here. Now let's create an application to run on the VLAN using the new Docker network. So Docker run, detach, name equals whiteboard, internal and external ports are 8080. We're capping the memory at two gigabytes. We're saying up to one CPU. Uh, restart policy is restart always. And then the network is going to be the Docker network we created called VLAN 100. And it will be offered at IP address 192.168.100.17. And then there's the name of the container. We hit enter. It begins to download the Docker container and install it. Next, we go into the web browser and go to 192.168.100.17 port 8080. And there we are at our whiteboard. Back at the command prompt, we could do a docker stop whiteboard. That'll stop our container. And we can do a docker remove whiteboard to remove the application. And we can do a docker network ls. You can still see our network there. If we want to delete our network, we can do a docker network rm vlan 100 and we can do a docker network ls again and you can see that the vlan is now deleted so in summary we created a vlan 100 on the router we made sure that the docker host switch port was set to profile all or a profile that included vlan 100 we did an IP route to find out the name of the parent NIC. We created a Docker network with Mac VLAN using that parent NIC. And we created a Docker container with Docker run using the new Docker network to address the container on VLAN 100. Anyway, thanks for watching today and please subscribe and like to the channel and we'll see you next time.